My name is Brian Drake and I'll be your host for the evening. I'm a project manager in the utilities department and will be a point of contact after the meeting. Carries Water Services help maintain public health by providing high quality and safe drinking water. Tonight, we are going to talk to you a little bit about pressure zone shift occurring in April, which is going to impact approximately 200 properties as we move them from the Southern pressure zone to the Central pressure zone. And with that, I'm sure some of you have questions already. So we have prepared a short video presentation that provides a little bit of a background on Cary's water utility system and what a pressure zone shift means to you as a resident of Cary. A couple administrative housekeeping items before I jump in. You will be muted throughout the presentation. Uh, I think there's only uh, a couple people here, so that's probably not gonna be an issue. Um, please submit questions at any time by enter entering them in the chat. We'll be monitoring the chat and I have set aside time after the video presentation to address any questions submitted. Tonight's recording will be made available soon after the meeting on the Pressure Zone Shift website. The webpage can be found by going to townofcarry.org and searching Pressure Zone Shift. As I said previously, I'm Brian Drake, project manager and host for the evening. While this is a water project, it takes multiple departments across town to successfully execute utilities, fire, public works, and even inspections and permits. We have representatives from each of those departments here with us tonight. So if you can give us a wave, everybody. Thank you. And the easiest way to reach any of us is by calling 311 or emailing 311 at townofcarry.org. And with that, let's dive into our utility system. Good evening and welcome to tonight's pressure zone shift informational meeting. After a short overview of Cary's water utility system, we will discuss how the upcoming pressure zone shift impacts you as a utility customer. To start things off, let's talk about who we serve. Town of Cary, obviously, but so many more people than you would think rely on our water service. The Town of Cary Utilities Department provides high quality and safe drinking water to the citizens of Cary, Apex and Morrisville, as well as the Raleigh Durham International Airport and the Wake County portion of Research Triangle Park. Cary serves approximately 280,000 customers. Our job number one, provide clean, safe, high quality drinking water that tastes great. How does the water get to you? Cary's water system infrastructure consists of pipes, hydrants, valves, water meters, tanks, treatment plant, and sampling stations. 1138 miles of water pipe would reach from Cary to Canada if stretched end to end. All this pipe delivers the water produced by the Cary Apex water treatment facility to your house. And while it takes about 20 hours to treat drinking water, when the water enters the vast pipe network of the distribution system, it can take three to five days for water to travel to the most remote customers. Because of this, water in elevated storage tanks is turned over on a daily basis. We take great pride in what we do, as shown by the many awards the Utilities Department continues to receive each year. Cary's distribution system maintains approximately 21.25 million gallons of finished water storage capacity in our tanks, and that is about one day of normal water demand. The fact that the water is stored about 180 feet above the ground creates pressure in the system, and that is what brings the water into your house and into your home when you open the faucet. The elevated water tanks maintain pressure in the system throughout high demand periods and attenuate peak pumping rates. This way, the high service pumps can operate on a more consistent basis and refill the tanks during periods of the day when demand is low. The tanks also ensure water is available for fire protection and provide instant demand for an emergency such as a fire response or water main breaks. Here is a simple diagram we created to explain the relationship between pressure and ground elevation. The greater height difference between where the water is stored and what your house elevation is, the greater the pressure. Sometimes the elevation difference or pressure can be too high resulting in issues wearing out cheaper plastic plumbing components, causing leaks where you otherwise wouldn't see them. 
Other times, people wish they had more vertical separation between their house and the tank. The set of tanks that supply water to your home make up a pressure zone and all those tanks will have the same elevation. Almost two decades ago, we operated with just a single pressure zone. As the town expanded, we built new tanks in those areas to create new pressure zones, the western pressure zone and the southern pressure zone, with the original zone called the central pressure zone. Over the years, we have modified the pressure zone boundaries for various reasons, including to provide increased pressure, simplify operations, and increase system performance. And that brings me to the reason we gathered here tonight. Select sections of neighborhoods along Holly Springs Road corridor between Tryon Road to the north and Cary Parkway to the south, defined by the orange boundaries in this map, are transitioning from their current southern pressure zone into the central pressure zone. We expect an increase of generally between 10 and 20 pounds per square inch in the municipal water pressure throughout the defined area, depending on operating conditions, resulting in the zone shift. So why are we doing this? Simply stated, it's an operational change to ensure a more efficient way to move water into your area. Instead of your house being at the end of a long water line, it will be at the end of a shorter water line. Today your water comes from our water treatment facility at the edge of Apex and goes through the town to the tank on 1010 Road and sort of circles back north along Holly Springs Road to get to you. After the change, your water will come from the tanks in the downtown area and come directly to you via Walnut Street and Tryon Road. For you, the primary benefit is higher water pressure, which of course means you can do laundry, dishes, and take a shower all at the same time. Slightly higher water pressure is typically considered a good thing. If your property will be impacted by this upcoming work, Carrie notified you by letter that was mailed near February 9th, 2022. A secondary notice will be mailed to both property owners and tenants approximately four weeks before the work, about March 9th. A next door notification was posted to the area two weeks prior to tonight's meeting, and we also plan on putting out a reminder on next door two weeks prior to the implementation, or about March 23rd. And you may receive calls, emails, and or texts as part of our campaign to notify property owners and tenants. If you do not receive these communications and you don't see your address on our pressure zone modification map, your property is most likely not part of this project. So what should you do if your property is within the area of modification? Check that your plumbing system has a pressure reducing valve or PRV installed. Test your water pressure, assess your automatic irrigation system, and plan ahead if you will be out of town on April 6th, 2022. A PRV is a device that reduces and stabilizes the water pressure in a home, business, or other building to a level typically between 50 and 80 pounds per square inch. The home plumbing pressure reduction is important because the pressure in the town's water mains can be higher and fluctuates. How do I find my PRV, you ask? Well, PRVs are typically installed at a point near where your private water supply line enters the house or building. If you have a crawl space, the PRV may be installed just inside the foundation wall. If there is no crawl space, the PRV may be in a closet at the front side of a residence. In a business, it is typically in an equipment room. Do PRVs fail? Or what indicates a failing PRV? Yes, like other devices, PRVs fail due to age and other factors. If you notice a sudden increase or fluctuations in water pressure, a failing PRV may be the cause. As a first step, contact us at 311 for a free water pressure check. If your PRV is in need of repair or replacement, we recommend contacting a licensed plumber. Is a PRV required? The North Carolina Plumbing Code requires a PRV in all private water services where the municipal water pressure serving those lines is greater than 80 PSI. Between 7 and 10 a.m. on April 6, 2022, you may notice Town of Cary staff opening fire hydrants and turning water valves in the street. Valves will be turned slowly and hydrants will be open for flushing to ensure a smooth transition of water from the southern pressure zone to the central pressure zone. Additional town staff will be in the field ready to help troubleshoot any issues as well as monitoring the water pressure in the water mains. The operation should take less than three hours. Use water as you normally would throughout the day. There is no anticipated impact to the quality of our water. If you notice any discoloration in the water, run a faucet for a few hours to flush your lines. Because of the possibility of discolored water, consider delaying running a load of whites in your washing machine until a day or two later. If you experience any problems, turn your water off at your master shutoff valve and contact a plumber as needed. You can also call to speak with a citizen advocate at 311 for additional support. Looking ahead, make plans to monitor your home plumbing system closely for at least five days following the change. 
If you can't be home or if you are a property manager for a vacant property, we advise you to have someone check to ensure all plumbing lines and fixtures are working as expected. Otherwise, we encourage you to turn off the water supply at the main shutoff valve until someone can be present to monitor the system or contact Carrie at 311 to shut off the water meter for the property. Also, try Aquastar to view your hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly water consumption data online. Aquastar is the town's innovative, advanced meter infrastructure system that provides accurate, timely water use data regardless of weather conditions or power outages and allows for better leak detection and faster response. Visit townofcarry.org slash aquastar for more information. To wrap up, staff is here to help ensure as smooth a transition as possible from the southern pressure zone to the central pressure zone. Please do not hesitate to reach out to 311 or any of tonight's attendees if you have any questions or concerns with this work. All right, hopefully that uh, video was beneficial to you. Now I wanted to take a few minutes to check in on any questions that may have came in in the chat. Uh, John? Yeah, Brian, we had no questions. And um, if, if, if you're um, open to it, if people had questions, they could certainly unmute and do those. Uh, you know, that's, um, that would certainly be acceptable. Sure. Um, you have uh, Mr. Brown, Ms. Davison, uh, any other questions or, you know, I don't mean to put you on the spot by any means, so you can always contact me afterwards if you, if you wanted to. I, I just submitted a question. If, if I call 311, will they check my PRV? Correct. You can schedule a pressure check. Um, so, you know, we can tell you the, the, the pressure difference. Um, and then it could be uh, many different reasons, but uh, one of the main reasons would be a, a failing PRV. So. Well, yeah, the, <clears throat> my question is, I, I checked my pressure at my um, my outside bib, and it's 60 PSI now, and I can check it again after the pressure increase. Um, but what I'm concerned about is my outside bibs are don't run through a PRV. It's the inside of my house that I'm concerned about. And the only way to check that would be to, for example, put a pressure gauge on my, um, maybe the water line running to my um, washer and dryer and see the difference between um, the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. I'm just wondering if they, if they do check the PRV to see if it is functioning properly or if that's something I need to do with a plumber or myself. Yeah, uh, Mr. Reynolds, would you like to just kind of walk through the, the process that they do on the field for when, when they call in uh, to have the pressure check? Kind of explain uh, what they'll, what they'll uh, the information that you can gather from that. Sure, uh, Mr. Brown, Davis Reynolds, I'm water distribution system operator. So if you request a pressure check through 311, uh, one of our field staff will come out. We pull a pressure, uh, we pull a static pressure off of the fire hydrant closest to your property. And with your spigots being uh, separated from your in-home plumbing, then we could put, uh, we, we actually have a gauge that you could put on a washer wash machine connection because it's the same fitting that goes on your outdoor spigot uh, would probably be the closest place to check it and compare it to the distribution pressure that we would get on a fire hydrant. Okay, that that would work then. I I plan to do it anyway after the the pressure increase, um, <clears throat> but it, it would be good to have somebody who's got a good pressure gauge to check it. Um, so I, I'll plan a calling 311 if they can come into the home and, and yes. check. <clears throat> yes, sir. Walt, Walt would you, would you, uh, would you share in anything else to share on that? The, um, the washer box is the ideal place to check for the performance of the PRV because the hose bibs in most scenarios now are not actually, uh, are regulated. So uh, 
And I'm pretty sure that's true of, of all those neighborhoods in, in the in the pressure zone shift. So that's an ideal place to check for the for the pressure. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I, I noticed that I um, I can check it on the hose, hose bib, but the only place that my my pressure gauge would fit would be on the hose on the the washer bib. Yes, sir. That is correct. Yes, you, you go ahead and call in and, and it, they'll add it to our uh, service appointments and we'll get someone to come out and uh, check that for you, Mr. Brown. Yeah, and again, I wanna do it after the pressure increase. That, that's fine, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Uh, anything else? Yeah, what 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 do you expect the pressure to increase to? Is it is you, the the notice we got was maybe twenty psi? Yeah, depending on operating conditions, we expect uh, ten to twenty pounds increase. So from what from what you would be seeing now. Okay. John, did I see another? question come in that is correct and so the question is for, the question is from miss davidson and says when do we conduct a pressure check so we would prefer that you called in um now or any time before the pressure zone uh switch happens that it'll give our guys some time to do the pressure check and if uh for some reason the prv needed uh to be replaced that would give you some time to uh to contact a plumber and uh, have that switched out. Yep, you're welcome. I guess one other question I have is that, you know, over the past maybe year, we've noticed in Pritchard Farm that they've been flushing the, the lines through the fire hydrant um, very often for a while there was like every few days they would be dumping water out of the fire hydrants. What was that for? Uh, so I, I'll give you my two cents and then maybe Mr. Reynolds or, or Mr. Rebels can jump in and, and add anything I might have missed. But um, so essentially I, I touched on a little bit in our in our slideshow early on that you're kind of at the edge of a system. Uh, you're at the edge of a kind of a long line. Um, so we're kind of flushing just to kind of turn over some water there. Um, but this, this pressure zone shift will, will, will help that, um, by, by shortening the length of pipe between the tanks and, and your house. Uh, anybody else want to add anything to that? Yeah, I would just add, it's, it's all about keeping the water fresher uh, in the community, and that's the reason we're doing the flushing. We're also managing and monitoring some water quality parameters as well, and so we're flushing to keep all of the water quality within the parameters that we're looking for there. <clears throat> okay. Now, I, I had sent a couple messages. I'm not sure who answered them, but they, they sent me reports on the water quality, so I was confident our water was, was good. I was just curious. And being at the end of the line, I understand now. Yes, sir. We uh, we do flushing throughout the system um, at various places to make sure that we're always managing the water quality and staying staying right in those ranges of parameters that ensures that the water quality is is always of top quality. Okay. Good. Thank you. I'd like to add to that, Mr. Brown, what uh, uh, Mr. Revels and Brian said. So yeah, we do uh, pay a lot of attention to our daily parameters. We are checking our parameters every day throughout the system to make sure that we are maintaining proper chlorine residuals, uh, pH and all that. So, you know, we check a lot of different parameters, but it's, we call them our daily testing. So we do that along with our <laughs> monthly regulatory that we have to do. And we are doing that throughout the system every day. Uh, in fact, we're getting ready to start our annual disinfection switch over. And so that there again, it, it helps, helps us to maintain the quality drinking water that we have and, and keep us keep ahead of it. Okay, thank you.
All right, I appreciate those questions. Anything else? No, I, I, I just say I appreciate you having this, this video conference. I'm just surprised there are more, more people that would sign in to learn about it. But I thank you again for taking care of our water and for explaining to us. Well, yeah, we appreciate that. And uh, uh, we've been in contact with a few of the residents there. So, you know, I think maybe that's, and being the newer residential area. So that, that probably is part of the reason that nobody, um, or more people didn't join in. Yeah, well, I'm an engineer, so I check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trust, but verify. Sure. All right, and with that, anything else? Uh, Anybody else would like to add before we close? Uh, you're welcome, Ms. Davidson. She just sent us a note. Thank you that it was very informative. So appreciate the note. Thank you. Uh, well, I personally would like to thank everybody, uh, staff and uh, residents for, for coming in. Um, it's, I appreciate the help and, uh, and getting the word out. <clears throat> That's nice. nice. Yeah, this is Jack Smith. I appreciate uh, listening in and, uh, and hearing all of the updates here. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. Jack. Mr. Smith, I appreciate you taking concern to listen in. Uh, you're welcome. Just keep in touch. And uh, 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 I just uh, thank everybody for taking the time. Appreciate it. All right, with that, I guess I'll let everybody go home and get dinner and all that. <laughs> and we'll get this we'll get this posted to the website here uh, here shortly. So if anybody needs to <clears throat> refer refer back to it. All right. Thank you again. All right. Have a good have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.